This video addendum shows an example of human-centered distributed conversation modeling with our application, Virtual People Factory. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to go through the whole conversation modeling process. First, we're going to play the role of the expert and create an initial conversation corpus for a virtual human patient that has been having stomach pain. Next, we'll play the role of the novice and try interviewing that patient. The character won't be able to respond to everything we ask her. To fix this, We'll add new responses and attach new stimuli to existing responses. Last, we looked at if this testing process should be repeated. Now, let's create that initial corpus. Right now, we have a character with an empty conversation corpus. I've just added an image and a short description. The instructions tell us her name is Jane and she's been having some stomach pain. Our job is to conduct a medical history interview. Since we currently have our expert hat on, we're going to try to predict some things a novice might say to Jane and then respond to them ourselves. They might say, Hello? To which Jane would respond, Hi, doctor. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too well. What's wrong? I've been having awful stomach pain. So now we've added three stimuli and responses to the conversation corpus. Normally, we'd continue this process for a full conversation, but these give us enough to start. Now, let's switch to playing the role of the novice. In practice, we would have many novice users, but for our example, we're just going to show the interaction of one. We'll say, hello. Jane says, hi, doctor. Tell me what's going on? No response. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm not feeling too well. What's wrong? I've been having awful stomach pain. When did this start? No response. How did the feeling start? I'm not feeling too well. Well, that's an incorrect response, so we're going to press Mark Incorrect. These six questions have generated three errors, and so, three new stimuli. Let's switch back to playing the role of the expert and add the new stimuli to the corpus. This interface facilitates adding new stimuli to a conversation corpus. The first stimuli is, tell me what's going on. This is a false negative. We actually have a response, but no appropriate stimulus to generate that response. The appropriate response is, I'm not feeling, uh, and there it is, I'm not feeling too well. So we'll select that response and press make change. The next one is when did this start? This is a true negative, meaning there's no appropriate response in the script, so we'll write a new one. About a week ago, and press make change. This takes us to the next one. How did the feeling start? This is our last one. This is a false positive. The virtual human responded with, I'm not feeling too well, but that isn't a correct response. So we'll enter a new response. It started as a dull ache, but now it's really sharp and constant. And make change. At this point, we decide if another round of testing is appropriate. Since the student asked six questions and received three incorrect responses, the character got 50% accuracy, and another round of testing is probably appropriate. The last thing I'd like to show you is that we can immediately interact with this character in Second Life. Here we see Second Life. Over on the right is our Virtual People Factory Second Life application. After specifying the Virtual People Factory character and Second Life character, we press Login. And there's our Virtual People Factory character in Second Life. Let's say hi to her. We chat with the Virtual People Factory character just like we would with anyone else in Second Life. The chat information is passed to the Virtual People Factory Second Life application, which creates an XML web service call to communicate with the Virtual People Factory server. The server responds with both text and animations. And that's how we interact with the Virtual People Factory character in Second Life. Virtual People Factory also supports adding animations and audio files to these characters so they can be used in immersive interactions. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this video addendum.